This video is about to get funky. I don't know how much you all know about my obsession with lenses, but I love collecting camera lenses and trying out different ones, finding cool weird ones, using vintage lenses. That's how I get some of my cool B-roll shots and how I do a lot of my photography. And I have picked up two new lenses for the EF mount system since I'm doing a pseudo switch over from Micro Four Thirds to EF mount stuff. Picked up a couple new lenses that I wanted to show today. The first one is absolutely ridiculous. I just got this in today and have been messing with it. It is a eight millimeter fisheye lens. Now this is a lens that I thought I was getting to match the seven artisans eight millimeter fisheye lens that I have on my Panasonic G7, which I've used for a lot of videos and cool shots and just to keep me close to the camera since it has such a high crop factor going super wide means I get a more up close angle where I can manually adjust the lens and things like that. This is not that lens. This is from Mickey, Mikey, Mikey. Uh, it is a F 3.5, uh, eight millimeter fisheye lens. The difference is that it is for APS-C sensors. Actually that's, that's what the other one was too, but it didn't come with the standard Canon EF mount when I was looking for it. It only came with the EF mirrorless mount. This one is, comes in standard EF mount, but is only APS-C sized. And so I can put it on my Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro, for example, and get a really cool fisheye effect, like I'm shooting a 90s skateboarding video and I'm gonna have some fun with that. But when I first received it, just to mess with it, I actually put it on my 6DMR2, which is what I'm using to shoot this, which is a full frame camera. And it doesn't have a crop shooting mode for pictures or for video, uh, which is a, a big complaint a lot of people have with it and one that I have with it. I think it should at least have a mode for that, which means you get the full fisheye effect. But this, this lens actually started to see behind itself. I have in the sample picture here, a little LED panel that's off behind the lens, a few inches behind the lens, but the, off to the side enough that the side of it is clipping into the frame and it's able to see that, which is absurd. Uh, unfortunately, the, the lens hood is, gets caught in the frame as well, so I'm gonna take it off for this use. But we're gonna go on and switch to this because I think it is just absolutely ridiculous and I'm gonna have some fun with it. Now, of course, fisheye lenses are nothing new, but ones that can fully see behind themselves to a degree are always interesting to look at. So we're gonna switch over right. Obviously, that effect doesn't work very well with how ridiculous this is. If I can get really close here and Try to focus to the minimum focusing distance. I'm using the tiny monitor here. I'm not gonna be able to keep an eye on this. This is a ridiculous lens. What you're seeing over here, I am reaching my hand behind the camera here. I'm actually gonna, this is, I didn't prepare properly for this, but I'm gonna record this on my phone so you can see what is going down here. All right, so you're looking at my phone, which is getting blown out by the window. I have my 60 Mark II here and the window off to the side. And I am reaching behind the lens off to the side and you are seeing the window in this shot. Only only a bit of it, it's off to the side, only a bit of it, but you're seeing the window and that Wii U sign that is way up there on that shelf. That is behind the camera. That is insane. Now an issue I have with this camera or with this lens is especially compared to the one that I thought I was ordering, I just wasn't paying attention. It was a impulse buy, I guess. Uh, is that the minimum focusing distance is like 1.7 feet. So you have to be pretty far away from it, which makes this effect really weird. But I mean, you can do some weird stuff to get some cool effects going. And I'm gonna have a lot of fun playing with it. The difference is with that minimum focusing distance is with the one on my G7, I can get right up on it and get that, you know, really focus right on me and have my head take up most of the picture. I can't do that here. I mean, it, it's gonna distort me to all heck anyway, but you can't actually focus that closely. So even keeping it right, the, this should be focused on my face, but it, I'm still pretty far away from the lens. But it can see, you see the entire microphone stand right here, which is up above the lens and mostly behind the lens off to this side. You've got the window coming in on this side and watch right here. This is about three inches off the camera. You can see my fingertips. Bam, I'm touching the camera. It's just ridiculous. And you can have, this This thing was only like 100 to 150 bucks, super cheap. You can get some really creative shots with it and I'm gonna have some fun doing some stuff with it. Like I said, you get that 90s skateboard vibe once it's on a proper crop sensor camera for it or if you're in a crop shooting mode. But then I got this other lens that is the Laowa 15 millimeter F4. It is a wide angle, wide angle macro lens and also a shift lens. So we're gonna switch to that real quick. 
Now this is the Laowa 15 millimeter. Uh, it's an F4, so it takes in a little bit less light, which could be a problem if you're actually using it for macro stuff. Uh, but this is this lens. It's a wide angle lens. It, lens. it does cover the full frame sensor. You get, a, you get quite a bit of vignetting out here, uh, but it does cover my full frame sensor here. But it lets you do some really cool stuff. And I was actually recommended to this uh, by Caleb over at DSLR Video Shooter, who made a video on it, and I just had to have that lens. And you can do some really cool stuff. Uh, if I get here, this tiny little screw. So whereas this fisheye lens had a focusing distance that was further back and you couldn't really get the fisheye effect, this one has a really close focusing distance. So I can put up something really tiny, which needs to be kept in the light. So really tiny here. And if I adjust, that's aperture. Aperture and focus are reversed. If I adjust, I can focus. I don't know how accurate that is, but I can focus in on that right up next to the lens, but you still have all this wide angle stuff going on in the background, which makes some for some really nice bokeh with that PlayStation sign there. But you can, you can get all the way up on that lens and get macro shots while still having a wide angle view, which allows for some really creative photography. I'm just eyeballing how this is because I can't zoom in right now. You can get all the way up on it and focus and still have this wide open background, which makes for some ridiculous shots. So it's a wide angle lens. It's a wide angle lens you can get right up on and still be in focus, get some nice bokeh action going, but it's also a shift lens. So if I adjust the lever, you basically get some scanning action going on, like, you know, old pan and scan sets. The lever's kind of finicky. I never get it right the first time. There we go. So you can do this weird, it seems kind of weird at first, making my belly look a little big with that wide angle. That ain't cool. I'm not that big. But you get some pan up and down action, which seems ridiculous. But I found this really cool explanation and I'll try to recreate with my own shots. For example, if you're trying to take a shot of something involving vertical lines, instead of tilting your camera up and down, which is actually what I have done here, because this is camera level, the vertical lines are straight up and down. If you tilt it, the vertical lines kind of bow out or bow in you know, they get, they get distorted. So by having a shift down, that's actually too much. By having a shift up or down to match the height you're trying to shoot at, this lever is really not fun, however. You can kind of get a more appropriate angle so that your height is still where you want it, but your subject's in the proper frame, and then you can, and you can go both up and down with it. I prefer the angled downward look for selfie shooting like this, but if you're doing like architecture or things like that, especially with the weird macro stuff, you want that ability to pan up or scan up and down with the shift lens. It's not a tilt shift, just a shift, but it's kind of cool regardless. And now we're back to the kit 24 to 105 millimeter lens that comes with my 6D Mark II. Pretty cool. These lenses are pretty awesome. Like I said, I have a ton of fun experimenting with cool lenses and uh, everyone covers the kind of swirly bokeh uh, Helios lenses, and honestly, my shooting spaces are usually not big enough for that to really take place, even on full frame. Uh, it's very hard for me to get the swirly bokeh effect because of how much background foreground separation you have to have. But cool stuff like this, I want to check out more lenses like this. So if if you enjoy this stuff and have any lens recommendations, let me know in the comment section down below. I'm interested to hear them. And if you want to check out these lenses for yourself, I'll have affiliate product links to where you can pick them up for yourself, as well as that eight or 7.5 millimeter uh, fisheye that I use on my Panasonic G7, because that one's pretty cool as well. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education and uh, some photography videos. I've been having a blast with photography stuff lately, and I'll see you in the next one.